Last time on Sailing Garuda, we explored Eleuthera, experienced the No Queso Dia, struggled to connect our Iridium Go, uh, and set sail for the Exumas. This week, we navigate the notorious Exuma Cuts, explore the Bahamas Land and Sea National Park, and catch up with some friends. I'm Herb, and this is Heather. We're post-career empty nesters who found the next phase of our lives lacking. Inspired by other YouTubers, we bought a small fixer-upper sailboat and spent two years building her into our traveling home. Now we're about to find out if it was all worthwhile. Subscribe and come along on our next adventure as we set sails to rediscover what's really necessary to live a meaningful life. Away from things that let go, floating on the way. We go bottoms up, we go all the way. When you're feeling down, push the pain away. We go bottoms up. Well, we've been enjoying our uh, time here in the Exumas, at least our original few days. We're uh, parked out behind Long Key. You guessed it, hiding from the wind. But, uh, Gonna make a move today, go a little further south. We're gonna enter the uh, the National Park here and uh, get down to Shroud Key, but uh, let me show you around a little bit. Spirit cut. Hopefully, it's not very spirited today. Challenging to man the helm and fill. <laughs> Hope you guys appreciated the spirit. <laughs> holding on with both hands. There are no other sailboats out here. Because we're not like anybody else. <laughs> Team Garuda. Crazy. We chart our own course. Get a cool breeze off that squall. We're just motoring down Norman's uh, Key. It's actually not a very far, uh, far distance. By the time we put up sails, we'd be taking in sails. So we just kind of opted to motor this morning, trying to stay in front of the squall, and we'll cut in on Wax Key. A little rolly. We managed to miss the squall. It's gone behind us. I think you can see it there. Not too far from where we were, though. Sailing the Exumas means navigating the cuts, narrow passages between the keys, rocks, and cliffs, where the shallow Exuma bank and the deep waters of the Exuma Sound violently swap water with the tides. Add a little wind, and it really gets interesting. After today, we'll be sticking to the shallows on the inside route for a while. Well, the chart on the multifunction display just went out because, you know, it wouldn't be challenging to go through a cut unless you uh, didn't have a map.
So you can see where it comes out though. It's like, it's gonna pass us. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I forgot about that being back there, but I wasn't worried. All right, we're through the cut. Things are a little calmer now, I think, other than we don't have a chart. <laughs> so we're gonna try to reboot that and get that thing rolling. I'll give you a look around, a lot of super yachts. What a difference a few miles makes in the Exumas. Norman's Key is a popular charter boat location, home to McDuff's restaurant, a cottage resort, and even a private airstrip, none of which we can afford. They also have a marina for boats larger than 50 feet, starting at $350 a night. That's two to three times the going marina rate, which we definitely can't afford, but we do hear it's nice. We're headed a bit further south to Shroud Key, on the northern edge of the Bahamas Land and Sea Park, where, by the way, it's $18 to anchor and $30 for a mooring ball. Ilya Tolstoy, grandson of famed Russian author Leo Tolstoy, played a big role in establishing the park. In 1958, he assembled a group of conservationists to prevent this part of the Exumas from being purchased by land developers. The expedition to survey the natural resources of Exuma followed, and included like-minded Bahamians and the National Audubon Society, who was interested in protecting the West Indian Flamingo of Inagua. The published survey and report called for an organization modeled on the British National Trust to acquire the lands and manage them as protected areas to prevent their loss. Today, the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park is a natural conservation area, covering 176 square miles of both islands and ocean. Nothing but clear water, unspoiled reef, sand beaches, mangrove and coastal forests, and all the birds and sea life that rely on them. Visiting the park, you'll find a few boardwalks and trails, a visitor center, even a few man-made spaces, but generally the park is protected from humans. No trash, no fires, no fishing. Just the islands the way nature created them. Well, no pun intended, what'd you think of the well? Um, it's actually, I mean, the actual well's not too bad. It's kind of dirty. It's, it's cool. You were expected to get a drink. Uh, you know, I was kind of thirsty. And hot and sweaty, so. Gotcha. I went around the right there. Boy, it's like another world. Yeah, it does. That's what I'm saying. It's completely different than what you see down over this way. Yeah. Cactus, brush. You wouldn't even know we're on the ocean. We had quite a bit of rain last night, so um, there's water in pools or puddles that I assume probably are not here regularly, but um, it still really changes the view. It's pretty, pretty in a really desolate kind of way. I can almost imagine what an original expedition through here would have been like. I can't tell you you're going to need good shoes. <laughs> Hey there, just a quick interruption to say thank you for watching this week's video and uh, also just how much we appreciate all the support we've been getting uh, lately. So, man, big thank yous. Uh, we got some more great things coming up. We got a pretty good storm coming, got some dinghy adventures, of course we got some boat projects. So anyway, if you wanna make sure you don't miss anything that we have to come, um, please hit the subscribe button down below. Also maybe the notification bell, and that way you know when we've posted a new video. Anyway, just a quick pause again to say thanks, and back to the show. All right, good morning. We are going to uh, head over for a little mangrove exploration today, or at least a inner island river tour to the washing machine.
hiking up to the top. I want to see the view from up here. Hard to stay photogenic. <laughs> You're good at floating, so it should be your thing. Yep. Oh, you like me now, don't you? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Do the washing machine. Well, what did you think about uh, the washing machine inlet? Loved it. Great. Fun. Great way to spend Easter. And your anniversary. It was actually really fast burn. Yeah. Going out there, but then it takes you right out to the sandbar, and you get to stand up and walk the short and do it all over again. I was just kind of reflecting on the fact that we've ostensibly been without a home port or home address or home base, really, for the last uh, six months. Uh, maybe it's a little over that, but anyway, we've got six months into kind of constantly being uh, on the move. You know, we, we've had transient slips at some marinas, and we've been on mooring balls, and we've been on anchor quite a bit. And if you've been tuning in, you've seen a lot of the, the fun we've been having doing all of those things. There's certainly the variety of scenery that we've been enjoying, and that part has really been great. But I'd be hard-pressed to tell you that I've totally adjusted uh, within the six months. And it doesn't have anything to do with sailing or really even boat things. I mean, look, there are always projects. There are things I have to address. There are, I kind of have a wish list that, uh, that I'm working on. Um, you know, we break things and we got to replace them. And of course, anytime I want to go anyplace, I got to captain it and, you know, navigate it and deal with everything else in order to get there. But, um, I think the big difference, maybe this is an age thing, but, you know, I was kind of used to the, I hate to even call it nine to five, but there was a schedule involved in my life or expectations that were involved in my life that, um, you know, kind of centered around family, house, job. Um, I don't you're familiar with all of those things. Anyway, it's different. It's different, I guess. We've chosen kind of a unique lifestyle and, you know, there are no days off, I will say that, but um, it's, um, it's taken some adjustment and some days still the reason i know i'm not there yet is i feel like some days still feel kind of long and then other days seem to go kind of quick so i don't know maybe that's not a reasonable expectation i'm not exactly certain what i'm after with that but um anyway i'm kind of proud of the fact that we're six months into it and kind of continuing on and um you know, I'm glad that you're here to kind of enjoy, uh, hopefully you're enjoying uh, coming along with us on part of that. But I can tell you this, so I am developing a little bit of a wish list. I'm starting to think about things that I would do a little bit different. Maybe this is the world's longest shakedown, right? But, you know, six months in, there are some things I think I would change about the boat, some of which I guess would make it ours, but also some of it is just more practical, I think. Um, you know, it's a 40-year-old boat, and the truth is things have um, you know, have modernized since then. And so there, there's things that I would like to change a little bit. And I find myself on some evenings daydreaming a little bit. I got a few sketches and a few things written down. So anyway, I'm starting to look forward to a little bit of a, of a refit maybe coming up, you know, hurricane season will be here in a few months and maybe that'll be some good timing. So, you know, at the moment, my eyes are kind of set on the Southern Bahamas and, and then Turks and Caicos, um, Kind of thinking about maybe the DR, maybe hauling out in the Dominican Republic doing some work. I don't exactly know, but anyway, just kind of reflecting at the six-month mark. But couldn't be happier that you're here um, and that we're being able to share all of this with you. 
Anyway, in the meantime, I would also tell you probably my favorite thing is that we've met people all along the way. And today, uh, we're going to go and hang out with some friends, uh, Cameron and Jana, that we met actually in Bimini. And we have uh, crossed paths with several times. It's one of the coolest things about this lifestyle. But anyway, they've got a little secret hidey hole swimming uh, place. So we're going to go check that out. Cam's a great writer, by the way. So you got to see their blog. I'll put the link uh, down below here. But if you get a chance, go check them out. In the meantime, uh, hey, thanks for being here. And... Uh, We'll go show you our swimming pool. But I won't let the stormy seas Throw me in open water Let me have my peace And leave me till tomorrow Wind into my sail Away from things I let go, floating on the waves We go by 